Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Do you remember these as a kid? The old sort of 75 in 1, 100 in 1, 160, 200 in 1 uh, science fair electronic project kits that were made by Tandy or Radio Shack. They're absolutely fantastic. Lots of little spring ding terminals on them. There was a whole book here. You could just sort of like look up a circuit, figure out how to wire it up. Some of the circuits would be radio circuits. Some of them would be digital circuits, little radio transmitters, little radio receivers. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Well, I'm sure you and your friends had those when you were a kid or knew somebody that had one when you were a kid. Here is a slightly more modern equivalent. This is the Maxitronics 300 in 1 electronic lab. I found this in a charity shop and I think it was uh, on sale for 10 or 15 pounds. Absolutely steal of the century. <laughs> let's get into it and let's see what it offers us. Oh, there's a Big book, there's a way bigger book. Check it out, that's a monstrosity of a book. And I'm sure in there it will, yeah, there we go, exactly. And in here it has all of the different circuit diagrams that you can wire up. Cool. Then the unit itself. Now that looks futuristic. That is quite cool. And in fact, it has a battery compartment on the back of it, oh my goodness, there's batteries in there. Let's just, uh, oh, there's no, ooh, hang on. There's a, there's a little bit of leakage going on there. That's a bit scary. All right, yeah. We'll pop, we'll pop you back in there for now, but I reckon we'll be fixing it. Made in China. Anyway, the original Radio Shack and Tandy stuff was made in Japan, and this is made in China. So the quality may be a little bit dubious, but guess what? It still has little springeting things on it. <laughs> and it has a breadboard on it as well, which is fantastic. So you can plug microchips into that. It's got a two position switch, a variable resistor, a tuning capacitor, a little transformer, a ferrite rod antenna, fantastic. Uh, a bunch of LEDs, an eight segment LED display, a CDS cell or a light sensitive resistor effectively, a speaker up here, and then some buttons here down at the bottom. So that's the unit itself. Then we have in here the components. You've got like a couple of almost blister packs, if you like, of components and a slide off screen. So this one's got resistors in it and stuff like that. And the other one's got a crystal earpiece and some variable resistors and some wires and some capacitors and, and it has some ICs in it. What ICs does it have? A quad two input NAND gate, quad two input NOR gate, presetable up down counter, binary coded digital to seven segment decoder. Makes a lot of sense. JK flip flops. <laughs> JK flip-flops. I want to be on holiday when I hear the word flip-flops. Oh, and it's got a quad op amp in there as well. And I've got a couple of transistors, some diodes, and loads of resistors and that kind of stuff. So yeah, let's put some circuits together. This really is a quite a cool kit. If you look at the book here, it takes you through what all of the different types of components are and how they function. And then it goes on to tell you how to set this thing up, how to read off your column and row descriptions, and how to start making different kits. And the first one that it has <laughs> is a transistor radio. But we're not going to make a transistor radio. Oh, no. We're going to find something good. <laughs> All right. I think I've found something that I'm keen to have a play with here. This is a wireless code transmitter. So this project is a simple but effective code transmitter. The same principle is used on a communication device for military and amateur radio communicators around the world. You send the codes with the key 
that turns the transmitter on and off. So ultimately then, what this is, is a tiny transmitter. And it probably, it won't transmit over a very long way, but we can use this to transmit on AM radio. I'll, I'll break the spine of the book. There we go. We now know that this kit has been used. We'll build the wireless code transmitter. Look at that. Look how modern that looks. Magnificent. And yes, it has those springer ding dings. Slide the cover off, and that gives us access to all of the bits and bobs that are in here. So we have little baggies with various different bits and pieces. And this here is a bag of capacitators. Lots of digging through bags of components later. And yes, there we go. We've identified the five components that we need to make an AM transmitter. So the circuit suggests this layout here, which is equivalent to this circuit diagram here. So we have a little antenna, a variable capacitator, the ferrite rod antenna and coils, and then our little PNP transistor, a capacitor, a switch, and a battery. And every time you hit the switch, this will oscillate. So it recommends that we put this in position K. There we go, position K. Right, <laughs> just wiggle that into the very board. There we go, that's the transistor in place. Very board, breadboard. This is quite new breadboard. I can tell that because these resistors are not going in easily. Maybe I'll just go ahead and wire this up and invite you guys to see what I've achieved. I have built the circuit and it doesn't work. Weirdly, using my little Hantec DMM scope, digital multimeter as well, I've noticed that I don't get a plus and minus supply line. I've also, can you Adam and Eve it? I've also pulled the battery cover and checked that all the batteries function correctly. And I've also checked that they're in the right way around. So it would appear that there's a problem between connecting the batteries to the uh, Vero board. Right, we might have to get a screwdriver out and pull this thing apart. Well, <laughs> here it is, folks. So this is the battery compartment and the speaker various little terminals and all the cables from the battery compartment go down to the Vero board okay. Um, I'm starting to think that maybe the small amount of corrosion on the negative battery terminal might be the cause of our problems. And a little bit of gentle emery clothing later. Oh happy days. So there we go. Positive and negative. And now we get 9 volts on the meter. Happy days. So I think I've got it working. Hang on. Oh, 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 we got disturbed with dinner. What's this? My dinner is dessert. Dessert? I haven't eaten my dinner yet. What is it? Egg roll. Egg roll? Mmm. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, got it sorted. Here we go. So here it is. We have an Eaton uh, slightly modified. Uh, it has uh, lithium ion batteries running it instead of AA cells. A little um, Eaton digital radio which is magnificent. I absolutely love this because it does all of the ham bands, a single side band and FM, AM, long wave, medium wave, pretty much the whole lot. It's like a world communication receiver, but it's in a small package. I love it to pieces. Anyway, um, and then I've gone ahead and I've built up this little circuit here. It, yeah, it's just a little tiny oscillator that oscillates AM frequencies. Uh, and in fact, around a beat frequency of about 905 megahertz. And in fact, if I turn on the scope here, with a little bit of luck, on the hand tech, when I press the button, there we go, you'll see you'll see a big response on the hand tech there. And you can actually hear it coming out on the radio as well. So here we go. It 
So we're actually transmitting over a very short range. This is the uh, transmitting antenna right here. So uh, I'm keeping it nice and small so that it doesn't go too far. And to be honest, I don't think we'll be um, contacting Africa or anything crazy like that. Let's just talk through the circuit very quickly. So here is uh, 9 volts coming out of the AA cells from underneath. Now everything's cleaned up and we have a capacitor. Uh, that runs through the switch down to ground. Uh, we've got a, a little transistor here. This is a 2SA PNP type transistor um, with the emitter, the collector, and then the base at the bottom here. The base goes through a 100K resistor and the emitter gets hooked up to the positive rail via a 4.7K resistor. And the output... The emitter, uh, the output of the transistor there, goes through a little DC blocking capacitor, runs through a capacitor and a coil. In here we have a ferrite rod antenna just underneath that scope probe there. So little ferrite rod antenna capacitor uh, in parallel, effectively making a tuned tank circuit. And this little tiny transistor does all the hard work of oscillating up and down when everything's running. And that's pretty much it, really. But yeah, cool. It works. <laughs> Did I need a scope? No, but it was useful uh, to do a bit of fault finding. I definitely needed an AM radio to receive the signals that I was transmitting. <laughs> And so there we have it, ladies and gents, the modern day equivalent of the science fair 75, 160, 200 in one project kits. The Maxitronics 300 in one kit. A little bit more of a digital feel to it. A little bit more modern in the way it's produced and manufactured, but actually not bad at all. I quite enjoy this. I might play with some more circuits. <laughs> anyway, thanks ever so much for watching Dubious Engineering. Give us a good old thumbs up. Make sure you subscribed if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and beers, people. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.